Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be going over a brief introduction towards complex numbers, mostly aimed at electrical engineering students. So, I mean, I'm not going to go into any voltages or anything, so anyone could use this, but I'm just sticking to what you need to know as an EE student, 100%. So we're going to cover very briefly what rectangular format is and what polar format is, and then we'll tell you what they're used for and how you go about using them. And then in the next video, will go over converting between rectangular and polar format. So if you already know rectangular format and polar format, you know that they're used for adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, jump to the next video. We'll go over how to convert between two. All right, so let's get started into this video. Okay, so you've got rectangular format and you've got polar format. So these are the two types of complex numbers. Okay, so the way to think about it is the, we're just talking about expressions here. So if you imagine that, for example, you had a voltage. If I said there was a voltage A, then if I was expressing that voltage A in rectangular format, I would express it as X plus or minus J Y. And if I was expressing that same voltage A in polar format, I'd express it as A is equal to Z at an angle of beta. So let's break down what these actually mean. So in terms of the rectangular format, this, this X is the real component of the complex number. All right, and then this J Y part, J Y, this is the imaginary part. I wouldn't worry too much about what those terms actually mean. I mean, some people can get caught a bit too much up on the imaginary. Why is it imaginary? Don't worry about that. To explain that, let's go a bit deeper. So you've got a standard axis, you've got X and Y axis graph, right? So the X is the real part. So when you're talking about a number, if I, if I have a number that's here on this graph, it's purely real. It's not imaginary. It doesn't exist in the Y plane. It only exists along the X plane. If I have a number that's here, then it's purely imaginary. It doesn't exist on the X axis. The X is zero, but it has a Y, only a Y component. If you have a number that's somewhere along here, then it's both, it will both have a real part and an imaginary part. That's all those terms mean. I mean, if you don't like the word imaginary, you could pick something else, but that's it. It's super simple. So any number that exists in this part of the graph, it has a positive X component and a positive Y component. Any number that exists down here has a positive X component and a negative Y component. Any number here is both negative in its X component and negative in its Y component. And any number up here is negative in its X component and positive in its Y component. That's what that means. This whole section up here is positive Y and this whole section down here is negative Y. This whole section here is negative x and this whole section up here is positive x and that's it so the key thing to remember when it comes to rectangular format is we use rectangular format when it comes to adding and subtracting so when you're dealing with you know ac voltages or currents and you've got you've got the values of those voltages and you wanted to add them or subtract them you would you would use you would do that in rectangular format so if they were in a different format for example polar format you would then convert it to rectangular and then add and subtract them. And then if you wanted to, you can convert them back. All right, so let's discuss polar format. So same thing. Now the difference between polar format and rectangular format is instead of having like in a real and imaginary part, you've just got Z, which is the magnitude, and then you've got the angle in theta. And so what that actually looks like on the, on the polar chart, you would say you would have, for example, a voltage like this. You would say that magnitude of it is Z. You describe its angle as theta, and that would be in relation to what would be a reference signal. So this X here, for example, this X axis would be a reference signal. So for example, if you had a reference voltage and then you're describing another voltage, you would be doing that. So for example, you describe this Z in reference to the X. But don't worry about that. We'll cover that later on. So when it comes to polar format, in terms of what each position on the graph means, so for example, whether you had a magnitude going down like this or up over here or down this way, let's talk about it. So we would describe this X axis here as being zero degrees. This straight Y axis as 90 degrees. This one, the opposite end of the Y axis as minus 90 degrees. And then over here, opposite end of the X axis would be 180 degrees. All right, so let's just talk about what each position in terms of the angles means. So the angle along here, all of this portion, this whole bit here, is going to be a positive angle. And all of this as well. 
So any angle that goes along this way is going to have a positive angle from 0 to 180 degrees. This whole portion down here, all of this part is the opposite, from 0 to minus 180 degrees. So for example, this point here is going to be minus 90 degrees. We're talking about a neg negative angle. And the same applies for, for magnitude. So any portion along here, all of this part of the chart, is a positive magnitude and all of the stuff all any magnitude along this part here is going to be a negative magnitude and that's all we really need to know for polar format you just need to also remember that when it comes to us playing around with various different voltages currents whatever we're dealing with if we want to add them or subtract them we're going to use rectangular format if we want to multiply or divide them then we use polar format all right, so now we'll cover how to actually add and subtract rectangular format complex numbers and then also how to multiply and divide polar format ones. So remembering the rectangular format, A is equal to X plus J, Y. If we had two rectangular complex numbers, let's say we had two voltages, we'll call the first voltage A would be X plus J, Y, A. And we wanted to add it or even subtract it, it doesn't matter. Either add or subtract is the same thing. With complex number B, we do XB plus JYB. If we had these two, what we would do is we would just take literally the real components and add them together. The real A plus real B. And then we'll take the imaginary components, imaginary A plus imaginary B. And then that result would be our final result. So let's do an example. Let's say we've got A is equal to 1.3 plus J zero. And let's say we had a number, let's say, so that would be one voltage, voltage A. Let's say we had voltage B is zero minus J four. So if we, if we said that voltage C would be A plus B, how would we do it? We would just take these real components, 1.3 and zero and add them together. And then we take the imaginary components, J zero, and minus J4 and add those two together. So C would be equal to real A plus real B and then that plus imaginary, I'm going to say imaginary A plus imaginary B. Okay. So in our actual example, we have 1.3 plus zero and then we also have J0 minus J or j0 plus minus j4 right and so that means that c is equal to 1.3 and then minus j4 and that's it that's how you add and it's likewise the exact same for subtracting as well so if you was to say 1.3 plus j0 added together with 0 minus j4 that would give you 1.3 minus j4 so adding and subtracting complex numbers in rectangular format super easy and so in terms of polar format obviously we have Polar formats are constructed like that. Z at an angle of theta. So if we had Z A at an angle of theta A, and we wanted to multiply that with Z B at an angle of theta B, really easy. The way that we do that is we do magnitude A times magnitude B, and then we just do angle A plus angle b so yeah so you multiply the magnitudes and then add the angles together and it's the exact same thing for dividing as well so if you wanted to instead divide if you wanted to instead divide these then you would just take magnitude a over magnitude b and then you would literally do angle a minus angle b and that's the only difference there so instead of plusing the two angles together when you multiply you subtract them together when you divide and literally it is that easy so let's do an example let's say we had a voltage a and that was equal to nine volts at an angle of 90 degrees and let's say we had another voltage we go angle b or uh, voltage b at a voltage of two volts an angle of 45 degrees so if we said that voltage c was equal to a times b and what we would do is we would then 
take the magnitudes here, 9 times 2, and that 9 and 2 and times them together. And then we will take the angles, 90 degrees, add that together with 45 degrees. And then we have our new total voltage. So C is then equal to 18 volts at an angle of 135 degrees. So I've just done 9 times 2 and then 90 plus 45. If we said, we said that C is equal to A divided by B, then the way that we would do that then is we would then do C is equal to 9 over 2, and then the angles would be 90 degrees minus 45 degrees. That makes C equal to 4.5 at an angle of 45. So with polar format, you literally... If you're multiplying, you, multi you multiply the magnitudes together and add the angles. If you're dividing, you divide the magnitudes together and then subtract the angles. Rectangular format, you literally just add the real with the real and the imaginary with the imaginary. And likewise, when you're subtracting, real subtracted by real and the imaginary subtracted by imaginary. And that's it. If you found this video helpful, leave a like. And like I said, in the next video, we'll cover converting between rectangular and polar formats. It's super easy. And it's something that as you move forward in your studies for electrical engineering, you're going to need to get very, very good at anyways. And you will get good at it because you'll just do it a whole bunch of times. So you might be analyzing one circuit and you have to convert between polar and rectangular, rectangular format six times in one analysis. So yeah, uh, you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. It's, it is super easy. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.